गुड आफ्टरनून नमस्कार मी डॉक्टर स्मिता डिसोजा कोल्हापूर येथील ॲपल सरस्वती मल्टी स्पेशालिटी हॉस्पिटल येथे बालरोग तज्ज्ञ आणि नवजात शिशु तज्ज्ञ म्हणून कार्यरत आहे आज वर्ल्ड ब्रेस्ट फिडिंग वीकच्या निमित्ताने हे फेसबुक लाईव्ह सेशन आपण त्याचे आयोजन केले आहे तर ह्या सत्रामध्ये स्तनपान स्तनपानाचे महत्त्व त्याचे फायदे काही येणारे अडथळे यावर मी थोडासा उजाळा टाकण्याचा प्रयत्न करणार आहे आपले काही प्रश्न असल्यास खाली आपण कॉमेंट्समध्ये टाकू शकता जास्तीत जास्त प्रश्नांची उत्तर देण्याचा मी प्रयत्न करेन सो लेट स्टार्ट टू बिगिन विथ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट अ लिटल अबाउट द बॅकग्राऊंड ऑफ वर्ल्ड प्रेस फिरिंग वीक सो देस अ ऑर्गनायझेशन अ ग्लोबल नेटवर्क कॉल्ड ॲज वर्ल्ड अलायन्स फॉर ब्रेस्ट फिरिंग ॲक्शन वाबा सो वाबा इज अ ग्रुप global network of individuals and organizations which have come together to protect and promote breastfeeding in general they raise awareness regarding breastfeeding and every year they come up with this theme based campaign called as world breastfeeding week which is celebrated in the first week of august the theme for this year is protecting breastfeeding a shared responsibility now since Vaba has come up with this theme of protecting breastfeeding as a shared responsibility. We at Apple as healthcare providers have decided to do this live session just to raise the awareness for breastfeeding and try and overcome the obstacles that most mothers face during breastfeeding. We all know that breastfeeding is a natural process, but many mothers face a lot of difficulties during this natural process it's a big adaptation from being just one to a mother and child diet so we are here to help every new mother help in her process of lactation we as human beings have been blessed with this set of mammary glands through which we can provide breast milk which is the best source of nutrition one can provide your offspring and unfortunately sometimes there can be issues like breast tenderness soreness or difficulty in latching which can cause impediments during this process of breastfeeding so let's talk a little about the benefits that breastfeeding can have the baby and the mother to begin with let's talk about the benefits to the baby as i've already mentioned it is the best source of nutrition that you can provide to your infant so what are the nutrition benefits of breast milk one thing it is easy to digest second thing it provides nutrition in easily absorbable forms all the carbohydrates proteins and fats multivitamins all the minerals that a child will need to sustain in the initial 6 months of life other than the nutritional benefits to the growth of the brain and the other organs of the body the breastfeeding also is very helpful beneficial uh, to the baby in the form of decreasing allergies decrease in risk of infections because of the immunity provided to the infant and therefore overall mortality in the infancy is decreased because of good nutrition provided during infancy this is the first and foremost important benefit secondly we we'll talk about benefits to the mother now what are the benefits to the mother to begin with just immediately after pregnancy if the mother starts breastfeeding it leads to the contraction of the uterus and hence there is decreased bleeding decreased chances of anemia and yes so it's beneficial to the mother to decrease the bleeding secondly the for most important thing to the mother is it helps the mother come back into shape as soon as possible now how does it work now the mother is burning a lot of calories to produce the milk sufficient to provide nutrition to the baby and therefore she is losing a lot of calories and therefore there is enough weight loss the benefits like it increases the bonding between the baby and the mother because the baby is always with the mother the warmth the love that the baby needs is being provided and therefore it increases the bonding secondly the in the chances of postpartum depression are decreased 
to very very significant numbers and that is another beneficial thing to the mother and yes there are long term benefits yeah so we are talking about the long term benefits to the baby and the mother and the long term benefits to the baby there is decreased chances of long term illnesses like obesity hypertension decreased in allergies and also decreased incidence of certain autoimmune illnesses like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis similarly in the mothers the long term benefits include decreased chances of cancers which includes the breast and the ovarian cancer as well as decreased in autoimmune illnesses like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis so it it is self explanatory how beneficial breastfeeding is to the mother and the baby diet and that is what is what i want to stress on is why breastfeeding is so important now as uh, we go ahead let's talk about certain areas where there can be difficulty in establishing breastfeeding and that is where we as healthcare providers can help the mothers now what can be the impediments to pen a few we can talk about mother and baby separation sometimes because of maternal illness if the mother is sick during her delivery post delivery because of high blood pressure or any other sickness if the baby has to be separated from the mother because of illnesses like prematurity sometimes respiratory distress sometimes because of high levels of jaundice sometimes babies can have cleft lip and palate so these problems can be faced in the initial period of life and sometimes there can be maternal and baby separation later later during infancy and that can happen usually because if the mother is a working mother and she has to go back to work you know that is when the, the diff main difficulty arises now what can we do in these scenarios we need to guide the mother in a proper way to pump her milk and store her milk so pumping breast milk and storing breast milk is a challenging task but it can be achieved under proper guidance so breast milk can be pumped by hand and it can be expressed by use of various pumps she so mother needs to get enough medical attention to find which is the pump that is best suited for her how she supposed to use it and how can she clean it because usage and cleaning of these pumps is a challenging task and most mothers if they do these things rightly can maintain their supply for a very very long time to begin with hand expression is a very good technique but it is really difficult to hand express every time each time and because we need to pump at least eight to 10 times a day to increase our milk supply and to maintain it for a long term how do you store breast milk is another important question now breast milk can stay as good as it is at room temperature for 4 hours after expression and it is very very important secondly if you are putting it in a refrigerator pull, pull, uh, you need to pull it in a very very clean section of the refrigerator you can keep it for 24 hours without any issue if you're storing it in a freezer compartment you can store it for up to 3 to 6 months without any issue now the next important thing that comes is how to store it so there are a lot of uh, containers that you can use usually use plastic containers that are bpa free online if you check you will get a lot of bags or bottles that are bpa free and are conducive to use for uh, storing pump milk but uh, pump to breast milk and you can make use of any of those next important aspect is how do you use this frozen or deep freeze breast milk so there comes thawing thawing is bringing the milk back to room temperature the most important thing thawing should be done very slowly and it should never be done rapidly for that you have to remove the bag from the freezer keep it in the fridge for 12 hours and then the milk turns into its liquid state from the frozen state after the milk turns become back comes back to the normal temperature if you want you can 
uh, warm the breast milk in, uh, in lukewarm water. Now, how do you do it? You can keep that same bag in which you have stored your milk in a container which has contains lukewarm water and keep it for around 20 minutes and then it is all ready to be used. Most important thing is any breast milk that is thawed cannot be refreezed. You can keep it in the refrigerator and use it for 24 hours but you are not supposed to refreeze the milk that has already been thawed because there are chances of bacterial growth in that milk and which can be detrimental to the health of your infant. So you need to be very careful regarding that. Okay, now after addressing these smaller things of how to pump and store breast milk, let's in short answer a few queries, few common questions that usually lactating mothers have. First is question number one, when do I start breastfeeding? So according to the current recommendations, as soon as the baby is born, especially in cases of normal vaginal birth, the baby should be directly latched to the breast that it is as soon as possible that you have to start breastfeeding. Unfortunately, sometimes in cases of cesarean section, it is not a possibility. In that case, what you can do is as soon as the mother is out of sedation and she's awake and alert and happy to receive her infant, you can start breastfeeding. So as soon as possible, it really helps in the transition for the baby, it really helps for the milk output and it really helps the mother to decrease her bleeding. So start as soon as possible. Second question, let's talk about until when should you exclusively breastfeed your infant. Now what does exclusive breastfeeding mean? That means that the baby is, if gets sufficient breast milk, baby can sustain without any feeds from the top and without any water or any other thing apan generally guti ani he sagla baalna daycha prayatna karto tyachi kashachi garaj nahi hai karan aai cha dudhamade evdha sagla mhanje aahar ahe evdha nutrition ahe ani je kai baalala lagta garaja purna karnyasathi that we do not really require anything we need to just breastfeed infant till the age of 6 months so why what should we do after 6 months is the next question so after six months baby has to be started on certain other nourishment in addition to breastfeed because as the baby is growing faster the nutritional requirements go on increasing so we need to introduce something called as complementary feeds which is a high energy dense nutrition which is provided in small quantities in addition to breastfeeding so breastfeeding still has to continue in addition to the other food items that we have introduced so breastfeeding can continue till the child turns two years old. So you can stop breastfeeding safely after your child turns two year old. This is the second question. Third thing is already I have answered when to introduce complementary feeds is when uh, the child turns six months of life. That is when you introduce your complementary feeds. The other few questions that people commonly ask is first thing, there are certain myths that colostrum, that is the first milk, it is wrong. So colostrum, the thick milk that comes in very little quantity in the first 72 hours of life after the baby's birth is like a boon that the baby can get. It is the first vaccine that you can give your baby. It is, it is very very highly immunologically active and it gives a lot of lot of immunity to your child and gives the nutrition that your baby needs and baby does need anything in addition to it so you have to have to give colostrum second question that women commonly ask is whether i can breastfeed my baby when i am sick so the answer is yes yes totally a yes you have to breastfeed your baby when you're sick the reason being your milk has a lot of water hydrates your baby your milk has got a lot of immunologically active molecules which protects your baby and thirdly since you are infected your body is already producing certain defense molecules which are passed on to your baby through your milk so definitely yes thirdly people commonly ask whether i can feed my baby when my baby is having diarrhea will my baby be able to digest my milk yes definitely that's again a yes you have to feed your baby when your baby is having a diarrheal illness. The reason being diarrhea causes dehydration, breastfeeding provides nourishment which is easily digestible. That is very important 
and plus it's providing you hydration and therefore it's a total yes you have to feed your baby when your baby is having a diarrhea illness next common question is whether to give honey or sugar syrup at birth bile and mouth fat hodaye che aple kade khup paddhat aste ti barobar ahe ka yogya ahe ka tar nahi it's wrong it's wrong you should never give honey or sugar syrup to your baby it is not easily digestible that's the first thing and there is something called as botulism which is highly prevalent because of giving honey to your baby during after pregnancy so i think uh, i've tried to burst a few myths and i've tried to introduce you to the importance of breastfeeding and i've given a bit of overview how to pump and store your breast milk i'm happy to accept any questions if you have all right okay that's it thank you very much and hope i have raised some awareness regarding breastfeeding its importance and as healthcare providers as family as relatives it is our joint responsibility to help this mother overcome all the obstacles and achieve breastfeeding thank you Thank <laughs> you.